Hello, we are now going to listen to Gabriel playing Debussy Sonata together with Fiona Mato at the piano. <laughs>
say about the technical aspect, there are some mistakes between the last movement, uh, just to show you that there you get to ta -ta -da, ta -ta -da. and then the second time is different, as you know probably, yeah, right? I know, but <laughs> Okay, but we will look at that. But uh, and also this at the end. But that's why do I start with that? Right? Because I think apart from the many, many, many things we can uh, speak about in this in this music, and we're going to try to cover some of them because this music is so versatile. There's so much happening in such a short time. This is a moment of music history where. The time is condensing in a way. You know, you have at the same time the late romantic pieces just before. If you think of Mahler symphonies or some of the Schoenberg pieces of the, of the of the time of the late romantic Schoenberg, which are incredibly powerful, big orchestra or the challenging person, were very long, very developed. And then comes this, the late Debussy which contains in many regards as much, as many information, but except in, in a very a short time. Another composer could make us fee, f think uh, about that aspect of how time can be more dense, you know, is Weber at the same time. In the same year you have Weber composing the, the, the small pieces for cello and piano. Um, and so this is of course very demanding for us because we have to be able to change mood, sound, character so quickly. And also even the, more, the things that we repeat, we repeat them in a very different way. It comes several times but always with different color. So, so that's part of the challenges I think we're facing. But coming back to what, what I was starting with is the rhythmical aspect of it. I think that could help you to uh, always consider how things are placed rhythmically in the bar. Apart from the melodic evident aspect, but starting with the first movement, I often have the feeling that the beats are in different places than where they are. You know what I mean? Yeah. I hear bita ya da 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 da, ti da 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 da. For instance, chi ya da 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 da, ti da 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 ya da 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 da. It's important because these are syncopation. The same way in the in the last moment where da 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 maybe more, of course, more precision with the piano as well, that's not a little thing, but also uh, sometimes more playful and also differently expressing, uh, expressive if things are on the beat or not on the beat. That's one of the important aspects. And I think in your case, because a lot of things you are doing are ex uh, really uh, extremely good, but that I miss. That's why I was beginning with that. Can we do it at the beginning? Um, you know, you know the, the context of composition of that piece, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> a little bit? Yeah. In French? You know? Yeah, yes, 1915. Yeah. Uh, and this is one of the last pieces by Debussy, you see? And when he composes that, it comes after almost two years when he has not composed. He was very depressed precisely by what, by what was happening in, in, in the war. And, and he's obviously ill, and this is the end of his life. So, one, we say this music is very versatile, it changes mood, but one of the characters, and I, I would say especially in the, in the first moment, is that it's very dramatic. Yeah. And that maybe you could, yeah. you know, you could go a little bit more into depth of that. We have this D minor, right? the first chord. I think that says it all in a way. Starting with this, it's very simple. This is also a moment, a moment where the VC looks back. You know, trois sonates. It was supposed to be six sonatas as we were the title. Unfortunately, only three. But that's already something. You know, the violin sonata and also 
the flute, the uh, violin, or sonata. Um, but also, it relates to ancient music in a way, as part of the many influences. So maybe that we could hear more, a bit like an overture. And also in this energy of the beginning, right? Sounds once again like a downbeat and and you see two one da 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 you see play with the bar she plays the downbeat da 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 so you you cannot play it as well.
like that you're making so much during your door. Still for the And you know one of the difficulties you have, I think, is the bowing. Because that's not very comfortable down bow. Here. It's much easier. Exactly. So the diminuendo starts here. Diminuendo doesn't mean softer, right? That's one of the very interesting and not easy thing about this sonata and gen general Debussy that you have to plan dynamics very much. This is a piano, for instance, la de la but the piano that goes diminuendo. So you have to have some, you know, sub substance in the sound in order to do the diminuendo. And then again. Otherwise, all this end of the introduction is a little bit weak. From here, Logically in the ralentando. You see? One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. You see? It has to have a logic. For me, the The line. The line is if you will listen to the piano. It's interesting to have that, right? We have a big legato over two bars. So one. a lot of things, huh? To me what you don't do is the second word here, sostenuto. She does it in a way more than you, which is wonderful for the piano, but we with the, with the cello we can do a lot of sostenuto, right? This is an instrument for dolce sostenuto. Let's try it. So uh, think of the character, right? What do, do, what does it express in a way? This thing. If we sing it, how do we feel about it? I don't know. <laughs> you don't know. Moi, j'imagine quelqu'un qui erre un peu. So, so I, I say in English for yeah. uh, somebody who's a bit lost. Yeah. Why not? Because of the silence, the rest side. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's the thing. Is it very comfortable? No. I think it's just simply, uh, in my humble opinion, extremely painful. Yeah. We are still in D minor, huh? <laughs> With a lot of um, expression on the second beat. With a... Um, It's subtle, huh? It's not a big thing. It's subtle, but it's there, right? Yeah. And also, um, 
Once again, the rhythmical question. The long notes are syncopations, so one, two, three, sense of holding those long notes, not let them go, right? No, when we were doing... 
it's nice because it's warm and the music is such. But think of the variety of vibrato. Déclamé. Huh? Déclamation. You, you speak for over there. Right? So try to understand the sound more. This just on one note. Imagine the cello goes that direction. Yes. Much better. You don't need, you don't need to press too much, right? Don't press, but oppose. Very interesting. Um, it's a catalog of different values of rhythm in short time. So okay. Short time, but a lot of character uh, and rhythmical. So I must be precise. I would say so. Yeah. Just the reason of the precision is is to make differences. Um, and um, difference, right? Uh. Yes, second beat so because the PC is making a little uh, game with that so to speak or and then so I insist on the fact that one is in a beat one or this is this is the same formula on which he insists right it's double Slower and on the downbeat. So from Okay, 
Yeah, he, he, that's difficult. Huh? You have a, you have a uh, pianissimo, a dash, and then piano. The piano is more, mm. right? But it's subito. Ah, yeah, I mean, in a smooth way probably, mm. but it tells you that you can have a little bit more sound. Yes. Take time to, to, to phrase. Don't be just fast, you see? Don't pressure yourself with speed. You can just freeze. The, the end was very nice, very, very good. Um, From there to, to, to finish. What does it write? Poco di bato. And, and you do? Molto di bato. You do molto moltissimo. <laughs> There's a sense in this music of what I was saying, this uh, ancient music, an evocation of ancient music, modern music. So. So if I travel. It's not the character, right? It's more intimate, more pure. Then you have to define what is pure. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I know that my, my first teacher was a student of, of uh, Maréchal, who himself worked with, uh, with, uh, with Debussy. He was saying that this was a, some kind of a farewell song or way to sing from Debussy. From a man who is obviously dying. So. Imagine you want to sing a long phrase, but you cannot really anymore. So it, does, it doesn't have to be like a Verdi opera, right? It's more intimate and a bit more dramatic. Sorry to ruin the atmosphere. But okay. <laughs> now we are going to have fun in Serenade. Also, you know, these are two different, or three, with the three movements, three pictures. Very different. So we finish in a more, in a little bit more dark. Although, there's a F sharp. There's a bit of hope. He finishes opening in a more color, more, more, uh, lighter color. Uh, atmosphere. So, See, also play, you can play more with the four, four beats. Oh my God. Two, three, one. This is Le Fête Galante. Yes. Very beautiful Fête Galante. No, this is... Uh, Debussy said it was Pierrot, the dialogue between Pierrot and the moon. You know the Comédia dell'Arte yeah. people? You know Pierrot Lunaire and the stories? Mm, not really. Yeah. You should read about that because this, this music is inspired by that. So Pierrot is uh, trying to seduce the moon. 
and he gets the only ironic I ever seen on, on uh, or ironical on on the on the score. Have you ever seen ironic written on a music score? I don't think so. That's unique, right? So this is prob probably the answer of the moon to to the attempt of Pierrot to seduce the moon. She just makes fun of him. And he tries, but never, never succeeds. But tries again. You see? But at the end, he's very disappointed. He knows. So this is a, it's a storytelling. I mean, I'm, I'm not I'm not sure that this is exactly right what I'm saying, but there has to be uh, because the Bussy said it, and then I didn't really deny it, deny it, but uh, uh, maybe it was didn't want only that interpretation to the piece. I don't know. But this is a programmatic uh, music. Yeah. From here. Um, sound you have to create on the cello and the cello sounds in many many different ways in the sonata. This is this is very specific of this moment of music history. You have that with Weber, you have that with Havel, you have that with Schoenberg, you have that with Kodai of course. So of course you play the cello but yes and no. You play there's nothing to do with the cello. If it doesn't sound like a cello Great, that means you succeeded, right? Yeah. It sounds like a guitar, it sounds close to the piano, it sounds like a flout, flout, flout flute. It should sound like a flute, and so on. Um, when you do, you should keep the fingers. Yes, but that's that's in the fine finale. But uh, oh yeah, but I just sorry I can't confuse the movement. But I just wanted to not forget to tell you that. So now from the, or maybe to give you a second chance because there was something wrong in the room there. of sound. We have a wonderful acoustic so we can see what happens. So you see, we have colleagues here. What what about it? It's, it sounds more like vibrates more. It's more clear, right? Huh? Clear. It's more uh, lively. Okay. Uh, consider the importance of intonation. D sharp. Flat, flat, 
Butter. Okay. How intonation changes the expression? Yeah. That's too short, too flat, yeah. That's great. It doesn't have to be loud, but as she was saying, it's, it's, it's just to, to be resonant. Because the piano has that quality when she does that kind of a thing. You see, you also have to match that. As soft as she plays, this sounds quite rich and clear. And then the cello is like, you know, pop, 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 pop. From there, oh no, sorry, again, to, to have this way. Lacks uh, power and clarity. Then uh, go ahead. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Expressive. 
And then one, two, three, one, two. You play too fast. This. From here. Go ahead, go again. I have only uh, a CD on the last bit. I know, but see, it's quite short as you do. Okay. Yes, and once again, funny boy. <laughs> That will help. Shana, no? Um. Yes. And can you count? Ta 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 One, two, three, four. Make sure you do the right dynamic. This is pianissimo. No. Subito. Yeah. A lot of subito. The same happens in the song, in the, in the last movement. Basically, you keep the tempo. You see? Yeah. It's not so, so slow. It's the same tempo as this, officially. Yeah? Which is very fast, I agree. So maybe a little bit... Uh, slower, but not too much. Huh? The freedom is important there, not necessarily the, the speed. And then comes presque long. I think you're being too expressive there for a pianissimo. Okay. Can you try that? Here? Yeah. 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 Yes. And do this little dash here. Ta -da 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 -da. Da 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 are in pianissimo. Yeah, 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 just... Okay? Mm. No, you, but, uh, <laughs> if you were playing with your first finger, you would <laughs> have better and easier control. <laughs> then that saves some practicing, right? First finger for pizzicato is the one that we favor, and then possibly we use others. But I, I often see... Uh, Everything used but the first finger. That's a bit weird. Look at the violins, they always use the first finger. Um, so, where does that come from? Spanish. Of course. You play that, you should play that more Spanish. Yeah. That's. Once again, also. Thing. We cellists know another piece that's using that. Casado? Yes. Yeah. Casado took it from here. <laughs> but this is Fandango, you also have that in Bocchiarini. 
This comes from very old uh, Spanish music. You know the fandango by Boccherini in the quintet? It's the repetitive form. And then it goes forever. But that's, that's part of the genius of Debussy. He uses that as an evocation of something that is supposed to last a lot. That, by the way, that's the thing he repeats most in the sonata, as an evocation of the fandango, probably, but just evocation, it's not much more. But that's, that is what is so difficult for us as interpreter. We have to try to convey the idea that this is a fandango that lasts for <laughs> two bars, <laughs> whereas the, the fandango lasts for 15 minutes, right? But if you listen to, to the Fandango by Boccherini, you will, um, you know, it will help you. Yeah. So, and in your pizzicato, incorporate da 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 if we listen to her. And she does it wonderfully because we hear all the notes, which is not always the case, thank you, Sopana, because she doesn't put so much pedal and so on. Yeah, it's wonderful. Like, like the guitar thing, da 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 Give no no give a clear first beat one It's fast enough, right? <laughs> so actually this is not a fast tempo, but there are fast notes in it. That's not exactly the same feeling. You have to feel solidly um, planted. Um, don't do the crescendo too early. Crescendo is on that, not on. It's on the ta di, not ah. on the e. Ta da de di, you do that. Ti ta di. I said it was. Yeah, but not before. Okay. You do crescendo to. Why do this crescendo? Ti. No, no. You do crescendo. There is no crescendo here. On the E. Uh, at the end, on the E. No. Yeah. Tara, on Tari, yeah. this question though. Well, it's, it's, it starts on the first beat. Yeah? Yeah. That's the first beat is, a, is an E. You do that. Okay. And it's written. Okay, c'est pas ce que j'avais écrit une fille comme ça. Parce que pour moi, le crescendo, il commence sur le i, enfin, sur le i. I understand, yeah, but you do it, yeah, you do it a lot and before. Ok. Uh, ok, I understand what you mean, ok, fine. <laughs> yeah, ok. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And you can see more than... Yes, yes, 
touch up. Mm. It's, it's, it's a lot of sun now. Actually, it's like two moves. But it, it, it's, uh, it's just easier to freeze. Lento, it's it's good, but not too lento though, because the, the lento applies to the beats. One, two, three, three. Yeah. And I think I don't know what you think, Fiona. But if we play too slow, we cannot have rubato. It becomes one, two, three, four, five, six, four, one, can be more free into that, but Play softer this. Mm -hmm. 